Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can find us on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Man, have I got an exciting video today. You know, this is a, a video I've been uh, planning on doing for quite a while now. It, the idea was uh, started off, I was going to do it about two months ago, but I've had a couple of big projects happen outside the shop, and so I really have had not a whole lot of shop time in the last couple of months so um, but that's actually been a good thing because I was just thinking about um, you know how I was gonna shoot this video and what I wanted to show you and I came up with something extra that we're gonna throw in there this is about etching okay not so much etching to put a cool pattern on a blade like uh, a mustard finish or a uh, forcing a patina like with vinegar or uh, even etching a blade um, with uh, ferric um, this is this is more etching for a purpose not related to looks what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look as to what kind of faults that you can see in a knife blade if you etch it and I don't believe I've ever seen another video um, like that besides uh, one of Ed Fowler's DVDs I believe he's got a portion in there and this interestingly enough this knife is going to go to him when uh, when I'm done with this test so that he can take some pictures for it to uh, put it in a, uh, an article he's writing so anyway so first we need a knife that is screwed up this one right here um, I didn't uh, chamfer one of the handle holes well enough before I quenched it and so it cracked so what I did was I went ahead and ground off the tip of the the butt so that um, you know it was painfully obvious which one this one was went ahead and rough ground it I did leave it a little bit uh, thicker probably about I don't know three or four times thicker than what I normally uh, do paring knives because I'm gonna need a little bit of extra meat because we are gonna mangle this knife okay everything that you're not supposed to do to a knife during sharpening and um, we're even going to do a, a cool little thing with the torch here in a little bit. Everything you're not supposed to do with it, we're going to do to it. Jack it all up. Take pictures or hold it up to the camera so that you can see all the discoloration and everything where we messed it up at. Then I'll hand sand it back down. Since I don't know how to edit these videos, what I'll do is I'll just post this video, bring it up on my laptop, uh, a side view of all the damage and everything, and then when I'm shooting the next video, when we go to etch it, you'll be able to see the etch. And then we'll cut to the uh, screen on my laptop and you can see what it looked like beforehand. I don't know how to edit the videos. That's about the best I can come up with. So this blade has been hand sanded down to a rough 400 grit finish. It is one of my standard large pairs. Okay, now you might be able to see if you're used to looking for hardening lines but there is a hardening line let me get it back of course now I think my scribe is messing with me. uh, there it is okay see the way the light reflects differently above and below or above and below that line right there that hardening line comes out here somewhere up in here turns up okay but uh, so far the only fault in the blade besides the fact that I left it really thick so we'd have some extra meat is you can see a crack right there now I went ahead and hand sanded over it hoping I could kind of blend it in a little bit hide it because this is all gonna be all about how to discover faults in a knife blade okay so the last video I made uh, yesterday was um, sharpening a knife on a belt grinder in that video I said that you uh, should use a coarse belt that you should use the grinder for shaping not sharpening uh, and that you're just using the belt to remove the bulk of the material so that it makes sharpening by hand on the stones a little bit uh, easier use a coarse belt and go uh, uh, have the blade going this away with the edge you know so that the the belt is going away from the edge so today I'm going to show you what happens when you don't do that. Now I'm going to keep it at the same speed. Um, last video I had a, uh, somebody talked about uh, not wearing hearing protection. I'm only, this is on the low speed. 
probably not as loud in person as what it seems like on the camera and I'm only going to be here for a few minutes so um, so yeah so anyway so I'm going to turn the belt grinder on we're going to go edge up uh, put a lot of force into it and we're going to start burning the edge I believe I'm going to burn some towards the point and then I'll probably uh, come back in here and maybe burn some right around in here and then uh, for this part in here it's ground quite a bit thinner and I'll tell you what we're going to do there, but it involves a propane torch. Okay, here we go. By the way, I already practiced on two junk blades trying to... Uh, practicing messing up a knife edge, because it's not something that I do very often. I don't... It's been a long time since I actually ground one by mistake. Uh, and it's kind of a tough thing to do on purpose, believe it or not. Okay, so we got part of it right there. I don't know if you can see that. The tips turn blue. We'll make it a little bit bluer, and then, like I said, we'll put another spot right around in here somewhere. Okay, there, like I said, that is, that is really tough to burn an edge on purpose. Okay, see how we've got blue from here to here, and then from here to here? Now let's go do the exciting thing I've been uh, uh, hinting towards with a torch. Okay, so we all know about, let's see, now I'm going to face you this way. We all know about power grinding. <clears throat> And what a bad thing that is. And the idea that if you don't see a color change, that nothing bad has happened to the steel, right? So this idea is what struck me. Let's make sure we're on camera. This idea is what struck me just a couple of minutes ago. We have got a propane torch, a can of water, and we're going to throw some reading glasses on here. What I'm going to try to do is play that torch over this thinner portion because uh, when I ground this, this part I ground thinner than this part up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat that spot repeatedly with the torch. I'm hoping to be able to get it hot enough to where it'll sizzle when it goes into the water but not so hot that I get a color change. With a little bit of luck, I'll be able to do that three or four times. So we'll heat it up, quench it, heat it up, quench it, heat it up, quench it. And like I said, hopefully we won't get a color change. And then we're going to etch that, and, and then we're going to—I'm going to sand the blade down. And then etch it in ferric. And see if it uh, see if it shows up. Let's see if the flame is okay. So we're right about right about there, I think. Okay. Never done this before. It's uh, probably should have done it once, just so that I wouldn't. Uh, So I'd look a little bit smoother on camera, but you guys probably know by now I'm uh, not really all that smooth on the camera and don't really care. I just kind of figure you guys would like to see this. Okay, so we didn't get hot enough this last time. Okay, now that time I heard a little bit of a sizzle and I also felt the sizzle through the tank. I heard some more sizzle and felt it through the tang again. So that's two. 
I don't see any color change, not any definite color change anyway. There's three. Four. Let's do like two more. I'm starting to see there's a spot right here in the middle where I got it just a hair too hot and you can see the uh, camera's making it look a little bit darker than what it is in person but it's uh, um, a very light straw. Oh look at there. It does look darker on the other side. But with a little bit of luck, we'll be able to see uh, a banding sort of thing. Oh, that one wasn't a very good one. There we go. Okay, let's dry it off real good. Ah. Maybe this uh, blue towel will uh, get the light right so you can see everything right up here next to my own homemade uh, etching machine okay so we got the tip there we got the burnt spot there we go get rid of, the, rid of those reading glasses before I get too dizzy Okay, we got a burnt spot at the tip. We've got one uh, about an inch long or so in the belly. And then we've got a hint of brown hint of brown in the back in here. On the other side, you can see that brown a little bit better you can see the tip and then this right here is what happens a lot of times if you look at this side you can see that blue real easy you flip it to this side and you see just a hint of it you know in something like that if you had a a knife maker that wasn't very honest at all you know if he saw that you know, you could come right back over. I mean, it's going to sand right out. Um, well, here, I'll show you. It'll sand right out um, with a piece of 400 grit sandpaper. And just by looking at it, you'd never be able to tell. But now we have a record on the video so we'll be able to go back and take a look and grab some that's 600 that'll work can you see that almost afraid to zoom in my hands moving back and forth will probably make you kinda dizzy now I'll just go ahead and sand it right quick and then pull it off See that? All gone. 
And actually the tape is saying that I have 10 minutes left worth of tape. So let's go ahead and dunk it in the etchant and see what we see. We'll just make one video instead of two. Okay, so I have got some ferric acid. Mix it up uh, six months ago. One part acid to four parts water. Um, I believe I used distilled water. Okay, so again we have a clean blade. No blue, no color change on this side. We still got a little bit on this side because I never did sand it. So let's see what those look like after you etch it. Got ourselves a little piece of coat hanger here. And into the etch we go. I guess that's long enough, we don't need that. And when you're when you're etching these blades, um, you'll have an initial etch that happens really fast. See there, you can see the hardening line, real plain. I can see a couple of spots that got damaged already. We're going to leave it in there for a little bit longer. Then we'll clean it off, shine it up, and with a little bit of luck, you'll be able to see what a burnt edge looks like after an etch. What the, what the etch does is, <coughs> you know, it's an acid bath, basically. And so, um, that acid is going to be eating away at whatever it is that you put in there. So you, uh, you have a differentially hardened blade, and so what happens is, is that the acid etches the hard part and the soft part at different rates, and that's the difference that you're seeing. It's really cool. You can learn an awful lot about your heat treat um, by etching the knives that you make. Uh, you can find faults like this. You can find where... Um, uh, especially if you're heat treating with either you know uh, uh, an acetylene torch or in your forge um, you can really tell you know where you got the knife hot enough where you got it too hot um, where it was too cold to harden um, you can learn an awful lot about etching your blades like this because it's plain to see I mean there's no more guessing hey did you know the whole blade get hard did just part of it get hard uh, you do a file check on the edge do a file check on the spine well hey that's all well and good but um, uh, so the edge got hard and the the spine stayed soft well if you're this is just a knife that was handy so let's say you're doing that on this blade right here well if you file check this is hard and this is soft well you have no idea without the etch how deep that hard part went so with just a file check, heck, you might have, you know, an eighth inch ribbon of hard steel along the edge and the rest of it's soft. Or you might have the other way where you have almost all, all of the blade hard and just a little bit of it soft. Without the etch, you're really kind of guessing. Okay, we're going to give it a quick dunk in uh, uh, TSP, that'll neutralize the acid, and then I'll rinse it off and rub it down in the sink. Okay, I'll be right back here.
Now that's not showing quite well enough. We'll grab some uh, See now I'm going to move you over here Okay, this stuff right here uh, Mother's mag and aluminum polish we sell it at the uh, Auto parts section at uh, Walmart and it works really good uh, to get the oxides off of a blade. So I usually just put it on there. And then, usually when I'm etching blades like this, the edge is already sharp. So I don't really want to rub down in there with my finger too well. So you just take a popsicle stick. Wrap a couple layers of that blue towel around it. And then, you can rub it, rub it out really well without having to worry about cutting the ends of your fingers off. Because there's nothing like trying to work without the ends of your fingers. And it takes them a while to grow back. Okay. That's looking good, I think. I was going to do this in two separate videos, so I'm kind of rushing here. I'll be dang, you can see it more. I got two minutes here on the tape. But you can see it more on the side that I didn't polish out. Okay, see on that part of the tip, you can't really see it this time. But on that side, it's pretty obvious. You can see a line right where that right where that blue ended. And I am not seeing hardly any what's up in here. I may end up having to to polish this up a little bit more and do it a couple more times to to get it to show you what I want to show you. Well, that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'll probably play around with this some more. Um, probably get it to where it shows you really good and then post another one. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.